Hello everyone, this is Homeless Bill, and I'm going to be showing you how to get Fart Noodle's awesome overlay working on your streaming setup in case anyone wants to cast since PGI is finally releasing the public spectator mode and improved spectator views. Uh, so, you know, this is the overlay, you can switch around, you can see the teams, uh, it's a great little tool, and um, I hope a lot of people use it. So, anyways, you're gonna need OBS installed first of all. So basically, just be set up for streaming. Have your you know virtual audio cable or whatever all configured, and then you're gonna need to install the CLR Browser plugin for OBS. It's just like a DLL that you put in some folder. I have a link to it in the video description. Third. Um, also linked in the video description, you're going to want to download the overlay that I have and unzip it. You can get it directly from Fart Noodle's website, I believe, but that is um, a more out of date version. I've made a couple of alterations, but mostly the data is just more up to date. Um, then you're going to open OBS and the stream control, which is in the base folder stream control stream control.exe the CSV files here are the actual data so this is where like all the teams are listed and if you want to add teams uh, this is where to do it you can figure out the format if you put enough time I'm not going to explain it here this is just going to be the quick and dirty one so uh, you double click that to open it And so now you need to go to OBS and actually add the window that it's going to control. So right click, add, seal our browser. And that is not a spell overlay, but I am too lazy to change it. So you're going to want to link it to the overlay.html in your casting folder. So copy and paste that. Overlay.html. You're going to set the sizes up to be your native resolution, or if you for some reason want it smaller, you can do that too. Or if you just want to make it obscenely large, that's that's fine. Um, and there you go. So now you can use the overlay thing to control where it goes. Right now we're on the team screen, the team one screen, and if we want to go back to match we just hit the save button. Unfortunately, this is the bug that I've introduced. Um, I changed the friends list, or the, not the friends list, the uh, roster from like a reserve roster and you know a main roster into just one big roster and in the process I introduced the bug where trying to move away from this page causes it to crash so if I hit save it just won't do anything I can't go to another page so you have to actually go down to OBS unclick reclick uncheck recheck I should say and then it will come back none of the other pages have that problem so I just selected the match page hit save it goes to the match page um, and going to the teams doesn't matter but switching away from a team page you need to uncheck and recheck to get it to unfreeze. Sorry about that. Um, the other pitfall of this program is that you don't want to finish typing things. You want to use autocorrect, so to speak. Um, so if I want to switch this to 228, see how two things show up? It's because that's what's in the data file. But if you finish typing it, it will overwrite it. It will just take whatever's in the data box right now which is QQ's info, and just write it over 228. So use autocorrect, click it, and it will be fine. You know, change this to Imperial, click it, you know, change the score, tell it not to show the next map, hit save, bam, it comes right back up. It's got your change data and everything's fine. The only time I, you know, it, it's, it's okay to not use autocorrect is the rules maps same way you need to do autocorrect um, you know tourmaline click it because otherwise you're gonna overwrite the data or it's gonna do something sketchy it's just how it works um, but rules since there's no data set associated with it you know you can have happy fun no pants time you know as, as a rule set 
and that's fine um, because that's just a little bit of text that appears down here at the bottom of the screen with the background of course that's what this looks like and yes you do want on OBS as you see I have a background layer right here um, I think that's bg.png yeah which is in the casting folder so let's see what else what else what else so map tactic that's right so another cool thing you can do since you had to install the CLR plugin anyways is go over to the map screen and you can make another CLR browser plugin that actually links to a map tactic session and you can sort of crop it off and what that ends up doing uh, you can use edit scene to drag the element around and you put it here and you want it of course to be over the overlay and then you can draw on the map so you know then I go over here and draw Pac-Man and it will show up on the actual map tactic session that you're viewing which again to the viewer looks something like that so it's good stuff I highly recommend that map tactic is a great site um, the map probably need to be updated but whatever we'll do that later so now the only last couple of things are the in-game overlay so in-game I've got I feel like the automatic scene switch is on and it's not gonna let me do anything so that's pretty lame basically it's the exact same thing except it's game.html um, hang on, get the overlay down. It's game.html, and all that does is bring up. Well, I will just show you. Paste that in there. Game.html, and this is like for actually in a match when you just want a little match score counter that's you know not obnoxious as you can see just a little bar that pops up here uh, it may conflict with elements now that um, now the PGI's release is releasing a new mode I don't know what it'll look like but it hasn't so far so there's that the other really helpful thing is scene switching um, for those of you that have watched me in the past, you know I've had so many problems with remembering to change the damned overlay. Um, and my solution now is the scene switcher. The automatic scene switcher is the best thing ever. Where, oh, that's why it was. But, uh, so basically now, it was running and I'll show you what it does, where Anytime I have MWO selected, it switches to casting in-game automatically, but anytime I'm not there, it switches away back to regular casting. As you can see, I, I can't even keep it there even if I want to. It just automatically goes back, and anytime it's in MWO, it switches to the game overlay. It's incredibly handy for those of you that are forgetful like I am. You can stop at any time to make it stop being irritating. So, you know, you can actually capture things and put the uh there's a the game overlay there we go so um yeah i hope this was informative i hope you start using his tool i hope farp is okay with this if not then you know i would gladly take this video down but it's a pretty great tool um i can pr i'm pretty sure you can do this with any game just add it and tell it to switch to an in-game overlay whatever you want you can have as many as you want in terms of scenes so good luck everyone hope this was helpful